Okay. Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, thank, thank you for joining my session. I really appreciate it. I see a lot of people. I wasn't expecting so much. So my name is Miguel Araujo. Um, I'm a software engineer at uh, MySQL Middleware and uh, Clients team at Oracle. And for the last uh, few years, I've been focused mostly in InnoDB Cluster, this new project. Um, more specifically, I'm leading the implementation and design of the admin API, which you'll get to know uh, what it is. So, okay. so the agenda is short, has to be quick, only 20 minutes. So I'll start with an introduction for uh, about InnoDB Cluster, for those who are not familiar with it. Then I'll move to talk about the shell and the admin API, which is the main topic for this. Then I'll do a live demo split in, into two about uh, setting up a cluster uh, to show you how easy and fast it is. And then I'll show you a quick uh, demo about uh, the automatic failover. OK, so it'll be cluster, a little bit of background. Um, it's a known fact that pretty much all organizations require their most critical systems to be highly available. Uh, most specifically, data. They cannot afford to, to have their data um, they have data loss or data not available, so high availability is critical. And how do you achieve it? I mean, if I ask around, pretty much all of you will say that is replication, and that's, that's absolutely correct. So high availability, critical fact factor, replication, common solution. Uh, MySQL has had great support for replication for quite some time with a classic uh, master-slave replication, but people is uh, looking for other solutions, for built-in HA solutions with everything integrated. And recently, we, MySQL has uh, provided group replication, which is a um, um, replication plugin, uh, update everywhere, so you can set up multi-master uh, setups. It's uh, virtually synchronous replication, and the most thrilling feature, at least for this use case, is high availability. So in Group replication uh, servers are parts of groups, and there is the notion of group, there is the notion of members of the group. So when an instance joins a group, all the others know about it, when it leaves, the same, and so on. Um, this allows group reconfiguration, and we also have distributed recovery, so when the instances join the group, they automatically recover all the, the missing data. This is all powered by a group communication system. It's, it relies on group communication primitives, and it's an um, uh, in-house implementation of the famous Paxos consensus uh, algorithm. Um, however, uh, this looks really promising, and it is, but it's not that easy to set up and maintain. Uh, you need some technical knowledge about it, and then people wonder how to configure the applications, how to integrate all the components, so you have your full stack HA solution. And this is exactly the, the vision that we have for InnoDB Cluster. There is a um, single product, MySQL, no external components, with high availability and scaling features baked in, providing an integrated end-to-end -end solution that is easy to use. That's one of the main goals of InnoDB Cluster, it's um, uh, usability. So three main uh, characteristics. Is a fuse with built-in HA an out-of-box solution with everything integrated, and this sets the base for scale-out and high performance from now on. So going bottom-up on the stack of um, the compon uh, components of InnoDB Cluster, we have the data servers running the MySQL and the group replication plugin. Then we have the application servers with the router, that is the other component that I, I, I didn't introduce yet. So the router is a very lightweight uh, middleware component that um, uh, it provides transparent routing between your connections to the to the servers with the data. So it, it, it hides the, all the TCP ports of the, the servers behind one port for uh, read writes and another for, for read only. And to set up and manage everything, you have the MySQL shell uh, with the admin API. That is the API to to do setup and configuration of InnoDB clusters. You have the clients and you have the full uh, stack HA solution. So again, one product, MySQL, full stack HA solution and easy to use. So uh, next topic, the shell. What is the shell? Uh, the MySQL shell is it's a brand new 
interactive multi-language interface for MySQL. It supports development and administration for the server. And it can be used to perform queries or updates or whatever, like you did with the old client. But on top of it, you can also do administration operations. And for that, we have uh, APIs implemented in the shell, which we call scriptable DevOps APIs, because you can do development and operations. And this one of the main goals of the shell is to be um, an unified interface for both developers and DBAs. Um, on top of that, it's very intuitive and it's very easy to use. So features, uh, recap, multi-language support. We have JavaScript, Python, and SQL in the shell. You don't have to restart the shell. You can just switch between languages. Uh, you can do both interactive and batch operations. And um, with the development APIs, we support both documents and relational models. So I don't know if you're aware of it, but I was already talked around, uh, around here about the document store. The shell has full support for the document store with a Fluent API. That is the Dev API. And we also have the support for the classic uh, relational model. Uh, what about the admin API? Um, the admin API is an administration API implemented in the shell, uh, which uh, allows to, uh, you to create and manage clusters. And the main goal of the admin API is to hide the complexity of configuring, provisioning, uh, orchestration of InnoDB clusters. It's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, the goal was always to be very usable, and usability is always a top concern. So it doesn't require MySQL expertise, but at the same time, it's, uh, it's flexible and it's powerful. You can go from the basic commands and basic operations to more complex ones. It's available currently in uh, both JavaScript and Python in, in the shell, and we'll see in the future. So uh, I'm talking about how easy it is to set up and do everything, so let's do a quick demo to show you how to set up a, a cluster. OK, so let's start the shell. Can you, can you see it? Or? Yeah, it's cool. So this is how the shell looks like. Have this eye candy. Um, it's, uh, you have uh, auto-completion. I can show you the, the online helper with the commands general stuff, and what I want to show you is that uh, in the shell automatically initializes global objects, so the DBA is the one for where the admin API is implemented. Then you have MySQL, MySQL X, that is the document store, uh, the dev API that I was talking about, and other objects, so all we care for now is the DBA one. You can see the auto-completion, it's quite cool. You can call the online helper, and you see the, maybe this is too big. You can see the, um, the available commands of the admin API. So for this demo, I have three, three virtual machines, uh, Linux uh, running on three different hosts, so simulating um, a real scenario, and uh, all of them have MySQL 8 running. So it's in IC1, IC2, and IC3. So let me show you how the shell looks like. So I'll establish a connection to IC1. 306. So I'm going to show you. You switch to SQL just like this, and you can run commands, for example, version. Ah. Or let me show you the host name. OK, so plain. Normal SQL. So let me switch to JavaScript. So let's go on and uh, actually create the cluster. So I'm connected to the first instance, IC1. That's where I will start my cluster. That the, the, will be the, the, what we call the seed instance, the first one. And uh, the first thing we'll do before creating a cluster is to, to verify if the instance is valid for InnoDB cluster. And by valid, it means that uh, in order to, for a group application to work, it needs some um, specific configurations, which not all of them are by default right now. So for that, we have a nice command that is the check instance configuration, which can remotely check it for you. So let's check. I see one. It's fine. It's valid for InnoDB cluster. So let's move on and create the cluster. So to create a cluster, we have the DBA 
create cluster command. Let me show you the online helper for it. Uh, yeah. Create cluster. No. Help. Create cluster. So the um, create cluster command has several. Okay. Uh, so syntax has several options. You can provide a dictionary of options. Um, has plenty of options. You can so by default, CNDB cluster starts in single primary mode. So one instance is the one. The, there's only one instance that can accept reads and writes, and all the others are read only. But you can also set up multi-master. You can adopt uh, an existing group replication group that you if you set up manually, and add uh, YP whitelists and so many other options. But I'll go for the defaults. So there's only one mandatory parameter that is the name of the cluster. I'll call it FOSDEM. And let's create a, a cluster. So cluster is up and running. If you notice, I assign a, a variable to it. So that's our cluster object. So if you, you can check now that you can execute, you have more commands, so the ones only related to the cluster object, you can now execute others, add instance, check instance state, describe, disconnect, dissolve, so on. You can check the status of the cluster. So we output uh, JSON for the cluster status, and you have several attributes, cluster name, the default replica set, we call replica set to group replication groups. Uh, each cluster must have at least one. This is the default one. You can see that by default, uh, InnoDB cluster is single primary mode, like I was saying. So the primary is the instance where I created my cluster. And you have the topology. There's um, this object with the address, the mode, the read-write. And the status is online. And it's everything fine and up and running. So next step, add more instances to the cluster. Notice the, in the status text, text uh, cluster is not tolerant to any failures, because we only have one. We need at least three instances to, for an InnoDB cluster to be tolerant to one failure. And let's m go on and next step, add another instance. So for that, I'm going to check how is the configuration of the second instance, 3306. So on purpose, I, I changed the configuration of this instance just to, to show here. So non-valid. Uh, OK. So uh, the command is telling us the instance is not valid. Some issues were found. And for example, the bin log checks on, uh, the current value is CRC32, and it needs to be none. The bin log format, it's statement, it has to be row. Uh, which is by default in MySQL 8, but I just changed it to, to show here. The transaction write set is off, and it should be xx-64. And this is the same output just in JSON. The command is telling us fix the instance, or we cannot use it in an AE cluster. Uh, but luckily, we have a command to fix the, ish, the instance configuration remotely. You don't even need to, to, to log into the instance. Which is the DBA configure instance command. So I'll call it on the instance. And the command is telling you the, the options that needs to change, the current valid and the required valid. It prompts you if you accept the changes. You say yes. And OK, the instance is now configured for you know, the cluster. There's a warning saying that uh, one of the, one of the um, it's saying that you require to restart the instance, and that's because of the transaction write set extraction. That uh, you need to restart the instance in order to for for the, the, the option to be changed. So let me sw switch to SQL mode. Establish a session to the instance. Okay, and now I'll run the restart command, which is this. Beautiful, amazing command that we have in MySQL that you can remotely restart an instance. It's really cool, so let's just run it. Let me reconnect the session. We're good. And just to prove that everything is fine now, 
I'll call the check instance command. And OK, it's good. So let's add, add it to the cluster. in the second instance. I'll add the third that is running on IC3. Okay. And let's take a look at the status of our cluster now. Okay. So you can see that we have the three instances. On the cluster, first one, the read-write, the other two, read-only, IC2 and IC3. And the status text is telling us that the cluster is online and can tolerate up to one failure. So our cluster is, is up and running, and you see how easy it is and quick to, to set up a cluster using the admin API. You have several other commands. For example, if you don't want to see the, the status of the cluster, but just the topology, you can use the describe command. With it's a simplified version of the status, only has the description of the topology, and so on. So, cluster, up and running, all good. What's the next step? Set up the router. So, let me... So, the router um, <coughs> has an option to automatically bootstrap itself to be configured for a specific NDB cluster. That's the bootstrap option. You have to specify uh, the URI for one of the members of the cluster. I'll use IC1. And you can also um, specify a output directory where the, the cluster will be installed. And it's a self-contained directory with uh, the configuration for the router and the start and, st and stop scripts. OK, so uh, the router is configured. And you can see here that read write connections go to localhost 6446 read only to localhost 6447 and you also have the ports for the x plugin so let me start the router there's a start script for it it should be up and running uh, there it is so I'm going to connect to the um, read-write port of the router, 6446. I'm going to get my, my cluster with a get cluster uh, command. You have to connect it to one of the instances of the cluster. We're connected to the router, so it automatically redirects the connection. Here's our cluster. Now let me switch to SQL and show you host. Uh, host name. So you can see the router is redirecting to IC1 that is our primary in the in the NDB cluster. So if I connect to the um, closed six to the read the only part of the router I can um, let me show you. It will redirect the query to one of the read-only uh, instances. In this case, IC3. So this is it. Uh, the router is running. Uh, in the DB cluster, is set up, uh, up and uh, up and running, and it's quite simple and, and straightforward to, to set up. This is just a basic setup. So uh, do I have time? Yeah. Automatic failover. Let me show you very quickly. So, for example, I'm going to kill one of the instances, for example, the primary, uh, that is IC1. So let me SSH to it. I'll just stop the MySQL service to show you what happens when the primary uh, goes away. <coughs> Come on. OK. So 
Let's reconnect. Let's get the cluster over C. Let me connect to the um, read write part of the router. Get again the cluster object. Shake the status. Let's take a look. So, primary IC2, a new primary was elected. The IC1, that was the initial primary, uh, is gone. I stopped the, the service. A new one was elected, is now IC2. And you can see here, IC1 is missing. Missing it means that it's registered in our metadata, but the uh, instance is not up and running. And the other two, IC2 became the new primary. Now the read-write mode is set. And the other is read-only, as before. So also the status text changes and, just, and it's telling us now that the cluster is not tolerant to any failures and one member is not active. So quick simulation, let me bring the service back up and running. And let's check the status now. And oh, that was quick. So the instance that was gone is now online and it's back to the cluster. It automatically rejoins the cluster and we have automatic failover. And that's it. So, quick summary. Uh, InnoDB cluster is the built-in HA solution for MySQL. It's a full stack, uh, high availability out of the box. It's very easy to use. Uh, usability was always and will always continue to be a top concern. And for, for that, we have the MySQL shell with the admin API that it can, like you, you saw, uh, uh, be used to configure the administrator in the clusters very easily. Brings together developers and DBAs. It's only one tool for, for both. And it's powerful, flexible, and secure. If you, those will be online, so if you have the links, if you want to go from here, I, I really recommend to check the user guide because it's, it gives you a global overview of the InnoDB cluster and it points you to the right directions for downloads. So it explains how to do a basic setup, then more advanced setups, troubleshooting, and so on. Uh, the shell user guide, the API reference manuals, and as always, our blogs keep being updated with uh, news and, and fun stuff. Okay, so questions? Yes. This one? Yet. When the shell was uh, uh, experimental, mm -hmm. I was told, okay, we wait until it's GA. When mm -hmm. the shell is GA, can you yeah. please put them together? Yeah. We will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's in the plan. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yes? Empty node? What do you mean? Sure, that, yeah. And you have the distributed recovery, so the join nodes, the data, will go into the recovering state that is fetching the, the missing data and eventually gets in the online state and it's up and running. Yeah. yeah, but only if you have all the binary locks on the machine. If not, you have to start <laughs> by a backup. Yeah. But yes, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah? Ask. Uh, we use set persist. That is a new feature of MySQL 8 that allows you to. I don't know if you know about set persist. No. Uh, so with set persist, you can run the, the command remotely, and the, the configuration is persisted in the server. So um, behind the scenes, there's the server creates. Don't go uh, too far. The next talk will discuss about set persist. Okay. So <laughs> stay there. Peter will tell you what it is. Okay. There is one great last question. Uh, How do you deal with flapping nodes? Flapping? Yeah. What do you mean by flapping? On, off, on, off. That, we, we don't deal with that. That's group replication. Okay, but if one node is uh, going off and then on and then off and then on, mm -hmm. 
It gets rejected. After all, if it has so too many issues, we say, oh, this is a network problem for this one, gets rejected for the group. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Okay.